Good evening Internet and welcome to Top Shift number 24. Now, this is Elite Dangerous Gamma 1. This is what we've all been waiting for. This is almost the release version. We've got uh, one more full release to come on uh, the 16th of December. But for all intents and purposes, this is what we backed the game for. So, what's new in the Gamma? Well, as you can see, there's no longer just one rank. We've got a whole lot of different statuses, reputations, finances, statistics, usual stuff there. But the galaxy map's different we have been used to a tiny little pill in comparison to this yes ladies and gentlemen we now have the full galaxy to play with well the frontier gonna let us play with there are areas which are hived off for future expansion but it's near enough 400 million stars 400 billion stars and one of these billion stars is this one. And what's important about Shinratra Deshara is it is the Founder's World. In here, if we go to the system view, I'm not going to Fong Wang, come on. We've got this thing here. The Jameson Mato Memorial and the Founder's World. Now the, this world here is available only to the Kickstarter backers. It might be opened up at a later point, I don't know, but here we have access to, I think, a lot of the high-tech equipment that's missing in a lot of the other systems. So if you need your ship equipping, this is where you come. I have one ship stored in this location, that's an eagle, but I'm not flying my eagle, I am flying the trusty Cobra Mark III, and I am going to go to this place. New nets. You can see there's all three stars here plenty of space stations. Now you can see also that these space stations all trade different things. Forest to dock. I wonder if that's a, a certain Christopher Forrester from uh, Live Radio. Could be. I'll have to ask him next time. But as you can see here, some of these places have markets. Like Forrester Top, for instance. But you go along to Raizanki Dock, and you've got no market there at all. But what we'll be going to is the Labrat Enterprise. Now, as per usual, first thing you do, check the bulletin board, see if there's anything heading your way. notice the organizations here we have the pilots federation that's who every player character or player belongs to but you've also got this the dark wheel now the dark wheel was an organization a shadowy organization in the original book that came with the original game it seems they've gone public if you like Now that's something interesting. Now if this 
is the Founders World. If we go to the Galaxy map, is there this place? Can't find it. But there is this place. Sixty four point four three light years away. And this is very familiar. Sol, Mercury, Venus, Earth. <laughs> it makes me laugh a little. We've got Earth and underneath Earth like world. Uh -uh, it's the original. That should just be Earth. And then we have Mars, which you can see here has been terraformed. Now there's a bit of confusion, we don't know which is the headquarters of the Federation. Um, it could be Earth, it could be Mars. I think in Frontier First Encounters it was Mars. But, uh, well, we'll wait and see. But we're not going there. So, let us launch. Now there are two new ships in this in this build. There is the Python, the classic one from the original game. And to tell you the truth, it looks a stunkingly good ship. And we also have the Orca. Now the Orca is a passenger liner, and not with a bit of luck, we might actually see one. Those of you who are interested, this is the Jameson's Memorial from the outside. Orbis station. Ah, if only my uh, head look would work properly. Looks like we have to get past the Orbis station before we can leave. I just realised I forgot to get cargo. Oh well. Might be something at the nap beacon we can have a look at. Actually, let's see if this still works. There There's our heat sink. It's quite happily fueling up there. Oh, 
What's that? Unidentified signal source. Let's see what's there. Might be a pirate or two that we can shoot down. That'd be nice. If only I could actually get after it. See, we've gone quite a distance from the sun already. But this is a th uh, a tertiary system. Ooh. Now you see all that? That was somebody who just came in very close. And I suspect that they're a pirate. I'll explain all about this interdiction a bit in a minute. Oh, hello. Timeline heavy. The mineral magpie. He's clean. Looking to buy red crystal in bulk. Well, don't think we're going to go there. worked out how you do ship to ship trading yet. Seeking resources for Is Rory Scarlet? He's one of the people from the Retro Wave podcast. Met the gentleman at Lavecom. Very, very. Had a good laugh at some shenanigans that were going on there. for a wanted vessel. Something I can bounty on. Just to pay for the fuel, I think. So those guys aren't needed. Oh, there is someone. Who's that? Steve Jones. Who's got some clean? And he's the, the local police. Oh, there's no... like there's no naughty people here, so. Right, well. I think it's time to head to, uh, Brete Enterprise, which is behind me, and around another star. So, prepare for a bit of a long jump.
There's been um, a very eventful couple of weeks uh, in the Elite Dangerous, um, mostly because of a couple of announcements that were made earlier in the week. Um, one of those announcements, <laughs> one of those announcements, was the fact that um, the offline single-player mode has been dropped from the game. Now, as this was originally part of the Kickstarter. Uh, you can imagine it caused a bit of a f of a uh, <laughs> outpouring of anger on the forums. Um, there are people there with genuine grievances, other who say that they would not have backed the Kickstarter if they had known that this offline single-player option was not available. Now, that's not to be confused with the single-player option. You can uh, still play this game single-player if you wished. The only problem is it still literally has to contact the server every now and again to do things like um, transactions and for selling goods or equipping your ship or even looking up the local system map. Now, we've done some measurements on this and you're literally talking bytes. You're not talking megabytes of download or communication. So you can actually probably do this over a G3 or a G4 tether on a mobile phone. Now, oh, sees Mr. Scarlet, got my message and disappeared. <laughs> but I do feel sorry for the people who genuinely, say for instance, they're out in the middle of somewhere with a very poor internet connection, who will not be able to play this game but backed it. For those people there, I am so sorry that um, you're going to go through this. Uh, I hope you get a decent internet connection and we can see you back in here soon. And I do think the PR that Frontier had could have been handled a little bit better instead of just slipping it in. A lot of PR and a lot of good news and there was one little bit of bad news that they didn't. they tried to bury, if you see what I mean, and that got picked up quite a lot. However, from what I understand, the amount of refunds that are being available are vastly cut down. Um, Frontier are offering refunds to anybody who has purchased the game but not played it yet, and anybody else who is wanting a refund, they're doing it on a case-by-case -case basis. So, well... I know what it feels like to have a game that you really, really want taken away from you. Uh, so it basically sucks for the people that this this affects, and I'm very grateful that I'm not one of them. My one concern about this was what happens if the game is ever sunset. Now, sunsetting or closing down of games, they they have this wonderful term called sunsetting just to make it sound a lot nicer than it actually is. Um, what would happen if the uh, the game ended? Now, David Braben has come online and officially said that what would happen is that the server would be backed up at a certain state and then released. So people would be able to pick that server up, pick that code up, and I would imagine we'd be able to run our own servers locally so you would have a single player offline game eventually but you wouldn't have the, all these dynamic events that the uh, that the galaxy has at the moment I think we'll have to spin around here again but for some people that's enough The other second, the second big thing was the launch party. Now, unfortunately, due to family reasons, I was due to go, but uh, some things happened which meant that uh, I wasn't able to attend. From what I understand, it was something to behold. Uh, they had a, a massive cobra, interviews with people, and a good time was had by all. I do believe. I don't think we had one person complain. 
Still a little jittery there, though, which is a bit of a surprise, but I expect that will be ironed out for release. Unfortunately, another bit of bad news is that I think everybody was under the impression that when it got to the Gamma stage, there'd be no more wipes. Uh, Michael Brooks, the producer, has turned around and said, Ooh, there might be. And to ev when everyone said, "Can you? are you sure? Can you give us a definite answer? He went, right, I can't give you a definite answer, but I'd rather say that we will wipe, rather than we won't. Just to prepare us all for bad news. I must admit, I do like this new height, this jumping in effect with the thing just jumping up. And that is an Acellus starport. This is, these are the big starports that are um, supposed to have big engines on the back. Oops, I didn't want to do that actually. I pressed boost at the wrong time. Yeah. Still, not too bad. An approach, kind of. <laughs> so yes, this see this Cooper Mark III is now armed with. Um, two forward-firing pulse lasers fixed, two forward-firing gimbaled lasers, uh, a fuel scoop, and 20 tons of cargo space. So, it's not an iron arse, or iron ass as, as they used to be called, but I think it'll be good enough in a fight just to get away if I needed to. Still got to find that out though. Right. Let's see how much this is going to have cost me. A lot. Right, bloop. to the commodities market. And computer components, that, those always seem to be a good one. So, buy as many of them as we can. Seven. That all. <laughs> Food cartridges. That'll do. Right then. Fifteen credits. That's a horrible thought. One thing that I must admit and uh, point out is that if you pause the game or come up with the the menu, it doesn't pause the game. So if, like me, you were just there thinking, "Oh, I better just make change some settings," that timer saying "leave station" would still be down there and still counting down. Oh, 
he's wanted. Is he now? Only for 500 credits. It's hardly worth it, really. Right. side of the Acellus. So we'll just pass that ship, that space station by. I wasn't able to play much of 3.9. They've released it for a couple of days. Um, but because I've been using the Google Cardboard and the Color Cross, um, that meant I used open track, and there was a bug if you used open track at any point with Elite Dangerous, which stopped it working. Now they fixed that quite quickly within a day, but I didn't have much time to play 3.9 because of it. Too bad. There we go. Now there was talk about extra facilities available at the uh, Founders World, but I'm not quite so sure whether or not those have been implemented yet. I haven't seen anything about it. But we do have the Federation and we do have the um, Empire offering missions as their faction. So it'll be interesting to see who takes what side. Now the one thing to watch out for are interdictions. Now, I've been interdicted a couple of times by pirates already, and what they tend to do is you have to watch your scanner more intently these days for other ships, such as this one here. It's an authority vessel, that's not too bad. But what they tend to do, if, if someone's going to interdict you, they come up behind you and then throw an interdiction tether. Now let's see what's in this unidentified signal source for a laugh. And then you have the whole interdiction uh, tug of war, if you like, where the idea is to either escape or capture the opposing ship. The loser. If you manage to escape an, uh, an interdiction, then the uh, interdictee, if you like, is chucked into real space and, and you leave them in your dust. Hello. Hello, what's this? He's wanted. and 
fifty credits. So I have a sneaking suspicion that he is wanted as well. dropping cargo. Five hundred and one credits. So oh now this is gonna be interesting. If I scoop this does this mean I'll end up as marked as stolen? Because if it's marked as stolen, then it might be a bit difficult to sell. Right, let's have a look. Damn, it is still marked as stolen. Now, do you take a risk? You know what? I'm not going to risk it. Call me a cowardly custard, but... Um, I don't think I want to risk the security forces on uh, the Jameson Mono uh, Monori Memorial. <laughs> I don't know if it's even got a black market, so it's not really worth taking it in. After all that, doesn't seem to have any security scans so far. So we could have got away with it, maybe. 44's right at the back. Undercarriage down. Now the one thing that's true of all the Elite games is maintaining your reserve because it is so tempting like I just did last time to kit up with a whole load of brand flashy new equipment and then you end up stuck because you have you've spent too much money and you don't have anything decent to trade with and it takes you a while to build up your reserve again and that's exactly what I'm doing now Yeah, it's not letting me f refuel. See, it didn't have... Oh, it won't let me refuel because I've only got 15 credits, that's why. <laughs> now, it doesn't have a black market here, so not much we can really do. One tonne of liquor. Right, 
commodities market. Hopefully we've made a bit of cash. No profit there whatsoever. It's just taking up space. That's good. Do we have any scrap? <laughs> I don't think that would do too well anyway. Lost four credits on that one. So overall we've made a little bit of a profit on that run. Maybe as much as 2,000 credits. Uh, which we then refuel. So that gives us 1,500 credits. Yay! Reducing lich lynching. Mm -hmm. Or HE suits. Well, I think I'll load up with HE suits because I can afford them. Although admittedly I didn't pick up my bounties. Nah, I'll do that next time. Looks like I've got about um, 2,600 credits of bounties worth. Oh, but the Viper's just hanging there. I'm sure it was hanging there last time. Here's the trick. Reduce your speed. Now that I'm at the range of the mass lock. Charge your hyperdrive. Wait till it almost gets full. Full throttle. Now if you time it right like just there you can get away quite a lot quicker than usual. You don't have to fly past the station to jump. It can save you as much as a couple of minutes. Which in game time does that. It's actually topping up quite nicely, really. Now, one thing to keep an eye on is your scanner. Oh, no, that, that ship's ahead of us, that's good. But 
Like I said, oh, we might have a ship behind us, and that's the worry. So, see, that's a Viper. Oh, he's elite. Oh, I don't want to mess with him. Approaching Meredith City. Fashion Coriolis. It's how to call them old fashioned now. <laughs> but they are a lot smaller than the Orbises. little lineup using flight assist on and proceeding to landing pad 42 <laughs> Those fuel scoops just saved us a whole load of cash there. Gonna have to learn to fuel scoop more, I think. Right. Uh, Here, they do want HE suits, even though there's no demand. So, go figure that out. Profit 4,900 credits. I think we just doubled our money. Isn't that nice? Well, on that note, I'm going to have to wish you all good night. But Gamma's here. I'm looking forward to getting into it in more depth. And hopefully, I'll be able to work up to something more than a Cobra on this release. So, good night, everybody.